Hey friends, how are you? This is Dr. Heather and we are talking about the very, very, very hot topic that I have been getting tons of message about since I whispered it a couple of weeks ago. Yes, ketogasm, keto and libido or foods and libido if we want to talk more about that. So if this is your first time joining Ask Dr. Heather, welcome. We generally don't talk about things like this, but we're actually going to talk about it tonight. So uh, if you're, again, if you're just joining Ask Dr. Heather, I have been practicing um, over 22 years along, 23 years alongside my husband at Cardin Center for Wellness in Overland Park, Kansas. I created this Ask Dr. Heather page because I would have patients come in, they would talk about their health concerns, but then they had a sister, a cousin, a friend, a spouse, and then the questions would come on or they would ask me what I would be eating and sharing recipes here. I get questions through Messenger. So as the keto movement has come very, very strong, which I'm super excited about, this has been an amazing opportunity for me to help answer questions. Either people don't want to ask me about in the office or ask me about at a hockey game or ask me about at the grocery store. And this seems like a very safe place for people to ask me about. So we have been actually eating low carb keto as a family and teaching it in our office for over 23 years since we opened up our doors a long time ago. It sounds crazy. Graduated in 1997. It sounds like a long time ago, but super excited. We've been teaching low carb keto zone classes in our office since we opened up our doors and really, really excited to be here today. So as you're joining, this is always meant to be shared. This is meant to be educational. I try to keep it very, very simple science. So we're going to talk about this. Um, if you're brand new to keto, write down new to keto or write down KD. That's a keto diet. If you're brand new, but we're going to make it very simple science today. And first we've got to talk about what hormones are or what libido is. People are like, and I'm going to say it probably five or six times. Um, <laughs> when we were actually teaching in Paola, Kansas, I did teach a little bit of sex ed. So I know how to teach this topic, but it's hard because I don't have a classroom of people. I can't read your faces and things like that. But let me know where you're joining from. Let me know if you're married or single. Let me know if this is an issue for you. It seems like it's a big issue for a lot of people because they're just too tired. Um, their hormones are off, they're on birth control or they're not on birth control, their cycles are off, they have PMS issue, men go through andropause, it's a real thing where they lose their hair, they start getting sometimes some man boobs because their estrogen level gets high, so that's exactly where we're going to start. So libido is simply a person's sex drive, it's their desire to have sex and it should cycle up and down throughout the month, women's do as well because our hormones are changing each and every moment of each and every day as we normal cycle up and down and it can be normal for women's hormones to be way out of whack. Number one, because of dietary and because of stress. So we're gonna talk about foods that actually increase that because we know we make estrogen, estradiol, testosterone, androgen. We make all of our sex hormones from cholesterol. What do we make cholesterol from? We make it from the foods that we eat. So if you're eating healthy fats or eating unhealthy fats, your body will either have a great time making hormones or it'll have a really difficult time making hormones. If you're on a statin, which stops you from making cholesterol, you're gonna have a really hard time making hormones because most statins are HMG coenzyme A inhibitors, which means it once it hits fat or statins, it stops it from making it because statins go to DHEA, which is our anti-aging hormone and breaks down all this nice little cascade of all of our androgens, all of our testosterones, estradiol, and you stop making those things. However, we know that we actually need to have those hormones. We need to have estrogen. We need to have testosterone. But when they get out of balance, then different things can happen to our body. So we know the keto diet can absolutely help your ketogasm or help your sex drive. And why is that? Well, we know ketones give us a better source of energy. We know that carbohydrates can create inflammation. When you're not feeling very good, you're probably not going to be very likely to be very active with your partner. We also know that if you're losing fat, because that's what happens. A lot of people actually think of the, um, they actually think of the ketogenic diet about fat loss. And think about that for a minute. If you have a better BMI, if you have a better um, self-esteem, you're more likely to actually feel like you want to actually be more attracted to your partner. So, so number two, you're actually going to be more likely to actually feel more comfortable being more vulnerable in front of your partner. We also know that ketones help you sleep better. So if you're getting better sleep, conversely, you're going to feel like you're going to be more in the mood, so to speak. We also know that ketones actually calm down your nervous system. So if you're 
nervous system is more calm. You're more relaxed. It turns on your dopamine. It turns on your oxytocin. It turns on these other neurotransmitters, these other hormones that actually absolutely help you with your libido and help you get your cycles more regular. We also know that ketones, when you're in that state of ketosis, or actually if you're actually using exogenous ketones, are better communicators, are signals for your brain. So they allow your body to talk to each other. So once your body is communicating to each other, whether it's a physical touch in a certain place, place or a physical touch in other places, you're going to get that communication, which is going to allow your body to talk to other things in other places. You're going to start communicating much better. Tony, I am getting to foods right now. So are there foods that can actually cause an imbalance in our hormones? So we briefly talked about some medications that can cause our body. So can proton pump inhibitors can actually imbalance your hormones as well. Let's just go straight for foods. So there are foods that can increase your estrogen. Estrogen can also cause a, a deposit in fat. That's one of the main things that it does. So as women and men go through andropause or go through menopause, you can know that as men start to age, sometimes they get man boobs. We know that men can also get breast cancer as well. We know that foods like tofu, soybean, milk, flax, linseeds, whole grain bread. Yes, whole grain bread can increase your estrogen. Hummus, garlic, dried fruit, carbohydrates, processed sugars, all of those things actually increase your estrogen, which can actually cause a decrease in testosterone, which can challenge your adrenal glands, which can also cause huge exhaustion in your body. Once you start getting exhausted, once your estrogen gets too high, your libido and sex drive go down because it causes a big, big cycle in your in dopamine and a big drop in your dopamine, and then it goes flatline. So then you no longer have that desire that you want to have. What happens is that conversion from the estrogen will cause the androgen to be converted to a different type of estrogen or estradiol which actually causes you to increase more fat or more fat to deposit which can cause your libido actually to want to decline which is what your major question was are there foods that can cause that absolutely there are definitely foods that can cause that also things there's an enzyme called aromatase some of you may be hearing about this or maybe you're a breast cancer survivor and you've taken an aromatase inhibitor well, aromatase is an enzyme that gets turned on all the time, every time you have a carbohydrate. So we talked about some foods, so we just listed that specifically increase estrogen, which we don't wanna do, um, because we all automatically are exposed to plastics and microwaves, and again, the processed foods and sugars and things like that, soy and dairy. Dairy only comes from a girl cow, there I'm again about dairy, except for grass-fed butter and ghee. All of those things are estrogenic foods, and we know that we're very, very estrogen dominant. That's why people can have metabolic syndrome, having trouble losing weight. Once you put on the extra weight, you feel tired, you feel sluggish. You definitely don't want to feel very sexy sometimes if you have on that extra weight, but you generally feel tired, feel fatigued, have trouble sleeping, which can cause sleep apnea. All those things can cause that cascade of effect, which can actually downregulate your desire to want to be with your partner. So if we can decrease the estrogenic foods, that will significantly help balance out into those hormones. We also have an, a, something called aromatase. Aromatase Aromatase is estrogenic synthase. It's just another name for it. We call it AKA estrogenic synthase. So when we're actually having carbohydrates, um, carbohydrates always stimulate aromatase. So with cakes, cookie pies, bread, grains, legumes, any of those type of things, you're going to stimulate every time you eat them popcorn, rice, potatoes, we could go down the list. Even if it's organic, you're still gonna stimulate aromatase. When aromatase is stimulated, you stimulate the estrogen synthase, so you're stimulating that whole process of estrogen. Again, if you've ever had breast cancer or know someone who's taken breast cancer, you've probably heard, heard oh, this is an aromatase um, inhibitor, aromatase, because you stop that estrogen being processed. So hopefully that makes a little bit of a sense. And we also know that those same foods that actually cause estrogen to go up also cause testosterone to go down. So when you actually look what are the foods that actually decrease testosterone? Testosterone has a lot to do with vitality. Women need to absolutely have a healthy range of testosterone, which should be about 26 to 33 for good cardiovascular support. It's a whole different range for men based on age, but the foods that actually increase testosterone for women and for men are things like walnuts and sardines and um, 
I have a whole big list here, but things, those healthy nuts like almonds and pine nuts and pumpkin seeds, um, uh, sardines, which I don't like to eat, but salmon and trout, those things you can eat, and broccoli, um, cauliflower and cabbage, those things also help decrease aromatase, also decrease estrogen, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, bok choy, kale, uh, green mushrooms, or all mushrooms, green tea. So there's all those good, healthy things, those above ground greens we talk about all the time actually help balance out aromatase, balance out estrogen, increase your testosterone. So you actually, all of those foods are the same for each category. So when you're having dairy, you're actually increasing estrogen, decreasing testosterone. Take it away, you increase testosterone, you decrease your estrogen. So the same thing is true if you wanna pick out carbohydrates like, um, what do we say, whole grain bread. So garlic's the only one that kind of confuses people, but whole grain bread or dried fruit, we're gonna stimulate aromatase, it's gonna stimulate the aromatase synthase, it's also gonna increase your estrogen level, it's also gonna downregulate your testosterone, you're gonna downregulate your libido. You're probably gonna end up depositing some extra fat. Now you're gonna feel tired and you don't wanna to go to the gym, so it starts creating this whole cascade. So once you start creating a lifestyle and understand a little bit of science behind it, then you're gonna to start to understand why people who actually are in ketosis or even just low carb, you don't have to be in ketosis all the time. And I do wanna clarify that because I get this question all the time. There are people who are actually on a low carb diet. They don't go around testing everything all the time. They kind of maybe eat a range of 20 to 30 total grams of carbs. They don't count all the time, but total, not net. So go around eating, you know, 20 to 30 grams of carbs all the time and say they go to a HIIT workout, they go to Orange Theory, they go to a CrossFit gym, they go to a hot yoga strength class. And you know, when they go in fasted and then they maybe they have their first meal at 11 o'clock in the morning, they're probably in ketosis. They can feel that, they feel good after they work out. And that's kind of how you can tell. Your mouth can get kind of thick, you feel super clear-headed, you don't get the yawns, as Dr. Kristen talked about the other day, if you listen to our chat about that, you don't get the yawns in mid-afternoon, you think really clear-headed, you remember where you parked your car when you go to the grocery store or after you worked out, you don't have those little brain bubbles or brain farts, sometimes people call those. That's how you know that your body's in ketosis and you can be low carb and that's the best thing about intermittent fasting is that you do things like you work out in the morning, you burn those excess carbs, you take advantage of your sleep, which is a fasted state, and and then work out, have some activities of daily living, rake your yard, maybe mow your yard, tend to your children or your fire or whatever it is that you're doing. And then you can go ahead and eat those 20 to 30 total carbs, not having to be exactly counting, eating intuitively, and then your body's gonna be able to cycle through those. You're not doing a cyclic ketogenic diet, you're just letting your body intuitively eating. So hopefully that kind of explains a little bit about how people go through that. And then you're actually in tune with your body, like, okay, if you're a female, we'll just talk real science here, like, okay, I can tell that I'm cycling now, I'm getting that mid-peak discharge, I'm getting that libido that I'm supposed to be getting, my cycles are getting more normal, because I get so much information, like, okay, I actually had an ablation of four or five years ago, I'm 30 some years old, my cycle had stopped, I'm on a low carb slash ketogenic diet, autoimmune, I took the soy out, I took the dairy out, I took the peanuts out, um, and gluten of course went out because gluten's out on any keto diet and I'm eating real whole food above ground greens. I'm kind of eating intuitively and my cycles are all back and normal again in my 30s. I don't want to have my cycle. I'm like, yes you do. In your 30s, you want to be cycling. Think about that for a minute. Women who don't have their cycles are grandmas, people in their late 50s and 60s. You definitely want to be cycling in your 30s and your 40s. Our bodies are supposed to be doing that. That's anti-aging. Those things happen in your 30s and your 40s. 40s. They should be slowing down in your 50s and stopping late 50s to 60s, not in your 30s. So just think about that for a moment. I'm sure I'll get a lot of little, little messages about that. But I do get a lot of messages about why do I feel so much more in the mood when I'm in ketosis or when I cut out refined sugars. We know that sugar causes sugar blues. There's a whole bunch of books wrote about that. We talk about children with ADHD and we pull out the sugars and the processed sugars and the food colorings and how much that does in the mood and the brain. I just uh, listened to Dr. Ken Smith on the Trolley Foundation page. He's a neurosurgeon who said, you know, the ketogenic diet does much more than seizure control. It controls overall health. And when you can start controlling obesity and hypertension, and when you can start really giving people
people a better quality of life, your body gets into that natural phase of homeostasis where you feel better. It's a natural part of life as you know, a married couple or a partner or someone who's 20 years or older to have a natural sex drive, to have a natural cycle as a female or a male should have natural androgen and should have that natural cycle as you start to age. It shouldn't be going through that that stage of life when you're 40. We hear that all the time. And again, this is called andropause. So I know someone's already messaging me about that. Did I make that word up? No, I did not make that word up. It is called andropause. So as you go through transitioning to more of a low carb ketogenic diet, it won't happen maybe the first month or so, but maybe after six months or maybe after eight months, your, your, your hair may not gray as fast anymore. You may be seeing changes on your na nail beds, maybe growing faster. You are getting gray marks before. That's zinc deficiency. They're not getting gray as fast, but you start to notice that as you eat healthier, that you know your hair may be growing faster. Maybe you're getting curls back in your hair. All that stuff should really start being much, much more prevalent like oh my gosh my hair is changing colors now that's all very normal because as again the anti-aging process but things that can forward fast forward the aging process or cause that oxidative process to cause your body to fast forward that aging process when you think of someone who ages someone who's in their 80s my mom's just turned 80 so i'll talk about 80 they naturally would have gray hair they would not be having cycles if they're a female if they're a male they would not be having an increase of libido it would be actually slowing down that things would be getting harder to do that would be normal and natural they might be having increased trips to the restroom if they're a male or female that all would be normal where we hear people now who are in their 60s who are on a ketogenic diet or 70s, they're able to have a really healthy bladder, not having to run and have urgency and frequency because they're getting more muscle tone because that's what the ketogenic diet does. It gives you better pelvic muscle tone. With that being said, when you're in ketosis and you have better energy, you're losing unwanted fat and now you have energy to work out better. We know that exercise increases blood flow to the pelvic area. We know that when you can increase blood flow to the pelvic area, it increases increases your libido. The more that you actually help with your chest and do push-ups and do lats and do backs and buys and tries, you know, that also increases blood flow to your chest area. And we know that your areolas, male and female, are highly sensitive areas. So the more that you can get that in shape, the more it's gonna increase your libido. So there's so many wins when you get that. Again, we know that so many aspects of brain and cognition for the ketogenic diet, whether it's stopping seizures, it's helping with memory, it's helping with recall up to 38%. You're getting more oxygen to the brain. So we're getting better signaling to the brain. The brain is signaling not only the brain from the hypothalamus to the pituitary, not only to the thyroid, but also to the gonads and the rest of the body. So you're getting better, better cycling, better talking, better signaling, better communication, which means everything works better in cycle. It's so fun to see the stories that people are sharing, but this has been a hot topic. I've been really nervous to talk about. Um, I do have a good friend who's an ob -gen. I'm like telling her like, can you talk about that for me? And so she's like just been super super busy but just wanted really like that very very simple um that this ketogasm topic is a real topic that people just feel better because their nervous system is more in balance their brain is talking to each other the major organs to your kidneys to your heart to your adrenal glands to your gonads everything's talking better and when you're in a better physical condition. Your BMI is better, some fat pounds have fallen off, you're getting stronger, you're sleeping better, your digestive system is better, there's no surprises. It makes sense that you're gonna feel better about yourself everything that you do, whether you're gonna walk taller, stand taller, talk better, you know, you're gonna enjoy cooking better, everything that you do is just going to be better. So um, I've got some questions here I'm gonna answer. Usually I come back and answer those. So. Um, and I love seeing where you guys are from. So let me know where you're from. So Hannah is from Ontario. So thanks for joining me today. So Becky's saying, um, I just thought, uh, I just, I just fought you tonight. I just found you tonight. So Becky, thanks for finding me tonight. I'm currently dying off yeast. So uh, we talked about yeast the other night. And you have to tell you, Becky, the first the first 10 years of my practice, I strictly used the ketogenic diet for candida albicans and for yeast die off. So um, I do think Diflucan is a great thing to use. However, those are one and two shot killers. You've actually got to continue to use something each and every day, like a good antifungal and a good specific probiotic for the yeast every day for about six months for a good yeast die off. The Diflucan will be a one hit wonder. 
it's kind of like like scraping the mold off the cheese and putting it back in the refrigerator but the temperature is still not right in the refrigerator so you've actually got to use something every single night and you need to use it systemically so I'm all about oral because yeast is in every part of the body it's not just in the vaginal canal it's probably in the mouth because it's the same membrane so when we talk about dying off with yeast you want to cut down all the vinegars anything fermented you want to skip the kombucha <laughs> for a bit going to give me emails on that but you want to make sure the body's acidic because when things are acidic then yeast and funguses can't grow in there so trying to start back on keto so you want to be autoimmune keto i'm glad you brought the dairy question up so no dairy if there's fungus in there so if you have a hormonal issue if you are fighting some type of fungus or yeast fungus or parasites if you have inflammation right most people have inflammation ditch the dairy i have a whole video on that becky on my youtube channel which is ask dr heather these and i have have dairy sensitivity so I just made my yummy mud cakes that are anti-dairy so Kite Hill is a cream cheese they make a dairy free I think one of this is cashews one of his almonds this is also dairy free and then diet cheese makes it with tapioca it does have some other stuff in there it has a little bit of casein in there but I would do everything without yeast so I would ditch the dairy I would ditch the vinegar watch out for dressings um, no pickles things like that let me look real quick without my cheaters on here so this is cashews coconut cream, seaweed, salt. Um, so this is a go, this is coconut cashews. This actually tasted really, really good. It's a little bit expensive. Um, and this was just plain, and this is almond, Kite Hill, if you guys have tried that. Again, dye has been out for a long time, but it does have a lot of other stuff in there. So it's not as clean as some of the other ones. Um, it's got, oh, it's got a little bit of canola oil in it, but also has some pea protein. So, um, but they all cook really, really great. It's a great little substitute if you need something. So um, hopefully that helps Becky. And I just go ahead and, uh, so I would not do the sauerkraut. I would not do the wine. I would not do beer. All of those things are fermented. So with yeast, it takes 180 days to make one new cell. So if you took the Diflo can today and then you ate something even tomorrow or next week that has yeast in it, you're going to re-inoculate yourself. So it's a big six-month protocol. So I generally have people, it's if you're taking birth control, that's going to stimulate it. Stress will also stimulate. And that's the same thing for libido as I had a whole nother sheet. So sleep, stress stress, exercise, all those things can get way, way better when you start cleaning up the diet. With that being said, yes, Becky, you can have grass-fed butter and ghee. Those are all thumbs up. Send me your email and I will send you my autoimmune friendly um, food sheet. That's low carb, paleo, um, keto, whichever way you want to go with it is autoimmune friendly and that will help you because we do ditch the fruits except for olives and avocados and limes and lemons because the acidity in those can actually help. And then Becky, I do love using the exogenous ketones just to help you get through the cravings it, it turns off some of those craving enzymes in your head and just by being said we do sell these in sample packs somebody said I don't want to buy 20 if you I just want to taste a few and see what that does for me I've been in keto before I just need to help the first week or so so we do sell those in packets I'm sorry I haven't said that the last few weeks we do sell them in combinations of packets with or without caffeine so we can help you with that and doing the extra electrolytes make a huge difference when you're transitioning over I say it's not the keto flu it's the carb flu like we hospitalized alcoholics when they're trying to withdraw from alcohol which is just a carbohydrate just grains right so when we're trying to detox with them then we want to do that so Lenny just send me your email address um, just don't put it here because I don't want people getting your public email address send it through messenger and I will send that send that to you my blog is down right now and they're supposed to have it up today but it's not so just stay tuned I'm trying to get that to you which is askdrheather.net something somebody hacked it so it's been down for I think about six or seven days so um, I will get that to you so hopefully you guys enjoyed the ketogasm talk we are getting ready to talk about and bringing a hair specialist in who knows all about toxins and hairs and what's exposed to and some of the sprays and dry shampoos and things we put on that and she is going to come with me live and we're going to talk about that this week and really help people be clear because um, hair loss is a big topic I've got a couple YouTube videos on that we're getting a lot of topics it's keto is not causing the hair loss it is stress because ketones don't make hair hair is made from collagen and from protein so if you're eating enough protein and you're getting some collagen in your diet, you should be fine. And I do refer this to a very, very simple explanation. When you look at third world countries that don't have all the hair products that we have, 
A lot of them don't have, they have a lot of stress, but not the same stress we have. Most of them are on a ketogenic diet. They go days without eating. They're hunter-gatherers. Then they'll eat and feast and feast and famine and famine and feast and repeat and repeat. They don't have reverse osmogus. So they're not drinking out of plastic water bottles, right? They're not doing those type of things. Um, and their coconut water is out of a coconut. And they have lovely hair, Um and so we're gonna talk about that, what the possibilities could be, but I do have a really good video. Most of the time, hair loss is generally from stress or from gut health issues, that you're either not eating protein and collagen or your body simply can't break it down and digest it. So the first thing I always have people do is just be a detective. Write down what you're eating, everything that you're eating. Look at the ingredients. Look how many things are in it. When you're putting things in your mouth, it should be something, or something on your hair, it should be something you could put in your mouth. If you're putting things on your hair that you can't eat you probably shouldn't put it on your hair so um, I'm gonna have again a hair expert person come in and really talk about hair products with that um, and so Becky brought that up hey, Becky it's probably the yeast because what happens is when you have your body's trying to detox fat it's also going to detox toxins in your hair and metals and things like that so I'm glad you brought that up it was really nice to have you join us here tonight again let me know where you're joining me from let me know if, the, if you are watching this I never say on replay but if you do want info on our sample packs we can sell them in three different packs we can sell them in five packs we just share it from our own stock we have at the office so let me know if that's something that you're interested in and then again, let me know if if they're if we want to talk more about PMS or something like that or just everyone's a normal cycling if you're a younger crowd I never know what age people are I know people to share their age but if that's more of a topic they, a libido has been a huge topic people have been asking me to talk about so I thought we're gonna call this keto gasms and we're gonna talk about keto and libido and what does it have to do with it because so many people are like oh my gosh I feel like I'm 20 again what's going on or my husband doesn't know what's happening all he thinks is because I lost all this weight is that what it's about or you know I haven't lost any weight but I feel like amazing I feel like I'm like you know four sizes down but I'm not yet but for some reason I don't know what's going on I didn't take any new medication my husband thought I did and now I feel like this and what's happening so that should be enough encouragement for most people to actually want to eat clean that's telling you when you eat the right foods your body performs like it's supposed to perform which is in a normal rhythmic cycle so thanks again for joining me tonight um, when is the hair loss video going to be Pamela I'm waiting to hear from um, Lori on her schedule it may be it may be Thursday or maybe Wednesday I just need to get with Lori's schedule um, but I do already have a hair video over on my YouTube channel just go into ask dr. Heather on YouTube and look under um, health and wellness videos it won't be under cooking uh, it won't be under my story uh, on my amputee story it'll just be under um, it'll just be under health and wellness I'm sure it's there um, because it won't be under fasting it should be just there or you can just Google ask dr. Heather on YouTube and hair loss and it'll be right there so just pop over there and you'll find it right there it's actually I think one of the better videos I made it goes under 10 topics of why you could be losing hair and what Lori's gonna go through is Lori's gonna go through all the parabens and all the other things that are in the products that we're actually putting on our hair and then again what we should be putting on our hair um, it will be probably heavier on the products that she uses but I just want to talk more specifically about the things that we do put on the dry shampoos how hard they are on our hair um, we're washing our hair way too often if you go to Europe they don't wash their hair every single day they don't put the products that we put on our hair you know and some of the other color stripping things that we do so I think find that one first Pamela and then make some notes down off that and then we'll be sure to watch for your name we do that video so um, I'll try to always announce it. Sometimes it just depends on how time hits, but it won't be tomorrow for sure. So I try to spread out. It'll probably be either be Wednesday or Thursday, but I'll message Laura right now. But thank you guys for joining me. Thanks always. Remember, this is meant to be shared. So go ahead and share, 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 and invite your friends to this page so we can chat more about amazing things. And if you want more cooking videos or things you'd like to do, definitely let me know because tonight we made a fabulous garlic lemon um parsley i forgot to put the parsley on a pork chop super super easy dinner for four could be dinner for five under twenty dollars for sure it was asparagus um organic asparagus pork chops lemon garlic yeah that was it it's under 20 bucks for five people so it was super delish anyway talk to you guys later you have a great day and thanks for joining me